Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Calix Sustainable Aquaculture series. We hope you enjoyed our first episode, and it is a pleasure to have you back. In this series of videos, we explore different aspects of aquaculture and define key characteristics of a more sustainable approach to aquaculture. Sustainable aquaculture is possible with the right mindset and innovative technologies. Today, we will be looking at the effects of current aquacultural practices and their potential effect on the environment. As we saw in episode 1, the increase in food production from aquaculture led to the introduction of intensive farming methods in shrimp culture. Intensive shrimp farming practices have been adopted worldwide and developed very rapidly, increasing shrimp production, but also waste management challenges. Nowadays, all intensive shrimp ponds have issues with bottom sludge formation, which has direct effect on both yield and the environment. Management of wastewater and pond waste, called sludge, are critical for all shrimp culture ponds. Main attention has been paid to improve management of solid or semi-solid state of shrimp pond waste. In most ponds, it is common practice to drain this toxic bottom sludge frequently, quite a cheap and effective way to control toxins. However, this pond waste discharge is causing huge environmental impact and is no longer a sustainable option. This is why many shrimp farmers are showing a growing interest in finding alternatives to improve their pond waste management techniques. But pond waste management is complex and needs to include treatment, disposal and recycling to be sustainable. Now, let's have a closer look at this sludge to help us understand why its discharge into the environment causes concerns. The sludge is a result of waste products being produced continuously during shrimp culture. It is a mixture of gases, liquids, semi-solid and solid forms. Some of these waste materials are removed through discharge and some settles out on the pond bottom which becomes semi-solid or solid waste. This toxic sludge discharged from the ponds is firstly high in COD, which stands for chemical oxygen demand. That means that microorganisms in the sludge are using most of the oxygen. This situation makes it difficult for larger aquatic animals to survive. Second, low in pH sometimes as low as 4. This means it has the capacity to acidify environments which can harm aquatic ecosystems. And thirdly, it is high in suspended solids, which can often contain pathogens. This is the ideal composition to cause severe environmental impact on aquatic habitats or to pass disease from one farm to the next. So, not only daily drainage is not a sustainability option, it is also wasteful in energy consumption and requires the usage of many sanitation and adjustment chemicals, which can also impact on the farmer's profit margins. In this slide, we see the different processes typically taking place in intensive shrimp culture ponds. As you can see, Waste products formed from a residue of pond inputs such as uneaten feed, shrimp feces and plankton, biological wastes from the shrimp and other organisms and eroded soil, settling to the bottom of the pond, slowly contributing to the build-up of a toxic pond bottom. Large volumes of accumulated shrimp pond waste will increase oxygen demand and cause oxygen depletion on the bottom that stress shrimp and create an environment more susceptible to the propagation of disease. At the same time, ammonia is released from the digestion process, which is then converted into nitrite, 
by a process called the nitration cycle, which is harmful to shrimp production and survival. Phosphates are also released from the uneaten feed, which can trigger the rapid growth of harmful algae, such as blue-green algae, contributing to eutrophication in ponds, which is harmful not only to the shrimp, but also to the aquatic environment in which it is discharged. This shows why pond waste can affect the appetite of shrimp, increase feed conversion ratio, lead to deterioration of water quality, but also produce negative impacts on the environment if it is not managed properly. In this slide, we look at the effects of high stock densities. Higher stock densities inevitably lead to higher feed volumes. And higher feed volumes generate more toxic sludge from overfeed and feces. This toxic sludge in current culture systems can cause severe problems with higher ammonia and subsequently nitrite. To maintain a good growing environment, frequent sludge drainage and water exchange is required, typically about 10% of the pond volume every day. Depending on how the sludge is drained and where it is disposed, it can have major detrimental effects on the environment. Yet, if the sludge is not removed from current culture systems, higher mortality and reduced growth will be observed in the culture. This is the typical discharge from a shrimp pond. This discharge is high in solids and high in COD, or chemical oxygen demand, which reduces DO, dissolved oxygen. Shrimp ponds discharge is also usually low in pH, but high in nitrite and phosphate. It is this combination that results in a sludge buildup that is highly toxic and dangerous for the environment. And if a farm is experiencing disease, it can also be discharged into the environment and passed on to downstream farms via water uptakes for daily water exchange. Let's look at some extreme effects of uncontrolled discharge from aquaculture ponds. In some instances, high phosphates and nutrients can cause toxic algae blooms, such as red tide, which is toxic to marine organisms and potentially harmful to humans. By now, you understand why and how shrimp culture can affect our environment. One of the many dramatic consequences is the destruction of mangrove forests, which are incredibly important ecosystems. Not only are they habitat and nurseries for many marine species, but mangroves are also crucial to maintaining water quality. With their dense network of roots and surrounding vegetation, they filter and trap sediments, heavy metals and other pollutants. Last but not least, mangroves sequester carbon at a rate two to four times greater than mature tropical forests and store three to five times more carbon per equivalent area than tropical forests. Yet between Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand and Vietnam, we have already destroyed 686 and a half thousand hectares of mangroves. That is an area equivalent to 32,700 Beijing stadiums. As yields from shrimp ponds decrease and become less profitable, ponds are often abandoned. Sadly, these abandoned ponds cannot be used for any other purposes due to high salinity and toxic buildup. In a later presentation, we will explain how calyx can help rehabilitate these ponds so they become usable and provide another source of revenue for local communities. Now, let's have a look at the effects of production of 5 million tonnes of shrimp per year. 
so you realize what intensive shrimp farming means for our ecosystems. Every year, this farm would discharge 5 million tons of organic matter, 360,000 tons of nitrogen, and 125,000 tons of phosphate. When these high concentrations of nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus enter the environment from artificial sources such as shrimp farming, the ecosystems suffer from disproportionate phytoplankton and algal growth, which can result in algal blooms and negatively affect natural aquatic environments to the extent that they can no longer sustain life and become a dead zone. In a next episode, we will explore different ways to reduce the toxicity and quantity of this discharge while reducing FCR, feed conversion ratio. Now you can imagine how the combined discharge of dense shrimp production areas can accelerate the reduction of water quality. Some of the observed conditions that lead to decreasing productivity or acceleration of farm costs are 1. Depletion of DO dissolved oxygen in the intake water 2. Greater chance of transmission of disease 3. Intake of nitrite and phosphate causing problems in the culture 4. Proliferation of toxic algae blooms 5. Increase in organic solids and reduction in clarity of intake water and 6. General reduction of water quality. When combined, these conditions can significantly reduce the farm's productivity while increasing costs to the farmer. While it is crucial to find ways to reduce aquaculture's negative environmental impacts, Shrimp farmers also need to ensure they sustain and increase their production to remain profitable. With the right production methods and culture, shrimp farming can grow without taking a major toll on the environment. A more sustainable industry means aquaculture and shrimp farming can become a more efficient way of growing food and feed the protein needs of a growing human population. With passion and a purpose of solving global challenges, Calix has developed AquaCal Plus, a water conditioner that safely addresses disease, improves productivity, to sustainably meet the nutritional needs of a growing global population. At Calix, we believe we can help improve the sustainability of aquaculture. Firstly, by improving water quality both in pond and in the discharge. Secondly, by reducing the need to discharge toxic effluents into the environment. Third, by reducing FCR, the feed conversion ratio, as less feed means less waste. Four, by reducing highly toxic waste product such as ammonia in the ponds and five by assisting with the rehabilitation of abandoned ponds to reduce the destruction of natural habitats such as the mangroves. Sustainable aquaculture is possible with the right mindset and innovative technologies. Because as we like to say here at Calix there's only one earth and it's already ours. Mars is for quitters. Thanks for your attention. We hope you found this video interesting and I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of this series on sustainable aquaculture. To find out how Calix can help or discover the benefits of AquaCal Plus for shrimp farming, visit our website www.calix.global.